I've got my mini feature coming up next, and I know he's going to pull things out from memory, but I'm really looking forward to it. I'm so glad he's here. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Jeff Helgeson. Jeff! <laughs> Jeff's going to be in the show next Wednesday. I will be doing the show next Wednesday. Yes, I'll be hosting that event. Uh, but, you know, I want to reminisce a little, too, about the Aloha, because um, it has turned out to have been a very significant part of, uh, I think, Chicago Literature Live, and um, certainly my experience. The evidence that I have of that came to me um, maybe six months ago. I was in a place, I was just hanging out, somebody walked over to me and said, you're that guy with the big fish. Ah. And I'm, I'm racking my brain for a while trying to figure out how I got to be the guy with the big fish. And then it occurred to me. He had somehow come across the video of the feature uh, on the internet. And uh, so I became the guy with the big fish. So I was very happy because there were other big fish guys from Chicago, if I recall, and nobody messed with them. Uh, and so I'm hoping the same will be the case for me. And then, you know, as I reminisce about the Aloha, I started to come to Aloha in probably 1997. Uh, Dave Rubin was hosting. I met Dave at the Green Mill. Dave invited me to come on a Tuesday night. And so I stopped in and I met Dave Getchick at the Aloha Cafe. Dave later became my publisher for uh, Thresholds and then for Sign of the Times and Fall from Grace. I met um, J.J. Jameson and collaborated with J.J. on any number of things um, on the Aloha Cafe. And um, it has had, you know, a lasting sort of contribution. I was able to do my first poetry feature because I never considered myself a poet, probably still shouldn't, um, there. Uh, we did a showcase of cuttings from my theatrical works um, at, the, uh, at the Aloha at the old location. And then I was here for Dave Rubin's farewell. Um, and uh, featured here and, you know, periodically came by. And so um, it seems like a loss to me. But, you know, it's the beginning of new things as well. So uh, the future unfolds. The past is something we can hang on to. So we drink to the memory of the, we toast the future and drink to the memory of the past here as we stand, um, sit, and gather together at the cafe, formerly the Aloha. And it's a good set of memories to come back to me uh, being here. So with that said, the stuff that I did the first time I was at the Aloha claiming not to be a poet um, was probably my little uh, festoon of Shakespeare. So I thought I'd bring some of that back. Um, the wind poems are always my favorite, the sonnets, um, when a disgrace with fortune, and when in the chronicle of wasted time. And then to finish up, a uh, third one, which seems to be appropriate for uh, this occasion, uh, that time of year. So anyway, when a disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcast state, and trouble death heaven with my bootless cries and look upon myself and curse my fate, wishing me, uh-oh, wishing me like to be like him with friends possessed, <laughs> desiring this man's art and that man's scope with what I most enjoy, content at least. Then, when myself almost despise him, happily I think on thee, and then my state like the lark at break of day uprising from sullen earth sings hymns at heaven's gate. For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings that then I scorn to change my state with kings. Mr. Shakespeare, brush up your Shakespeare. Uh, let's try the second one. When in the chronicle of wasted time, I see description by the fairest rites in beauty, making beautiful old rhyme and praise of ladies dead and lovely knights. Then, in the blaze and sweet of beauty's best, I see their antique pen could express even such beauty as you, Master, now. So all their praises were but prophecy of this our present age, all you prefiguring. And though they looked but with divining eyes, they had not skill enough your worth to sing. For we who now behold these present days have eyes to wonder, yet lack tongues to praise. Fourteen lines, and then I will abandon my.
nice spot here. <laughs> that time of year, thou mayest me behold, when yellow leaves or none, or few do hang upon those boughs which shake against the cold. Bare root choirs where late the sweet birds sang. In me thou seest the twilight of such day as after sunset fadeth in the west, which by and by black night doth take away, death's second self that seals up all in rest. In me thou seest the glowing of such fire as on the ashes of his youth doth lie, as the deathbed whereon he must expire, consumed by that which he was nourished by. This thou perceivest, which makes thy love more strong, to love that well, which thou must leave ere long. Thank you. Yeah. Back to Jane. And I didn't get to applaud enough because I'm carrying all this stuff around. So I'm going to say give it up one more time for Jeff Allen. And I'll give it another yeah. He's a great actor and I can vouch for that.